Chris Billum Smith relieves Lawrence Akoli of his WBO Cruiserweight world title via majority decision. Akoli really outdid himself in this fight because he's known for putting on ugly performances, but this one topped a lot. The difference here though is we had a referee who was willing to penalize Akoli for his excessive holding. He warned him several times and deducted two points, but I wouldn't have complained if he'd been even more strict because the clinching was as OTT as it gets. Okoli was also holding out an extended left hand in Billum Smith's face, an illegal move, which I don't recall the referee warning him about. Okoli has tremendous physical strength for a cruiserweight. No man who's been in the ring with him so far has been able to match that strength, including Billum Smith, but he's become overly reliant on using that strength as a defense mechanism by smothering his opponents up close. He's most comfortable at long range where he can keep his opponents at the end of his punches. But when someone gets inside his reach, he panics. He gets extremely anxious and that's why he does all the holding. The more aggressive the opponent is, the more often he clinches. And in the fourth round, we found out why he gets so anxious. A collie missed a big shot and Billum Smith countered with a left hook to drop him for the first time in his pro career. And the punch didn't even land that flush which suggests that there may be some serious vulnerability there for Lawrence Okoli. Okoli received another count in the 10th round, but it was a bad call by the referee, to be fair. The slow motion replay revealed that no punch actually landed. Still, it's hard to feel sorry for him under the circumstances because he just would not stop clinching and mauling. He was dropped again in the 11th, legitimately this time, so three knockdowns in total. When you combine that with the two points he had deducted, that sealed the deal for CBS on the scorecards. Chris Billum Smith deserves a lot of credit for this performance because no one has been able to drop Lawrence O'Colley before and he did it amidst an insane amount of holding and he had to absorb some heavy right hands as well. Fans often don't appreciate how debilitating it is when a man as physically strong as O'Colley decides they want to clinch you all night. It's incredibly frustrating because you just want to get your hands free and punch, but you can't push him off you to get enough space to punch. The guy's just too strong. He overpowers you and it completely nullifies your offense. I always thought that in order to beat Lawrence Okoli, you'd have to match his strength. And I thought the only guy who might be able to do that is Richard Reactpour. So I was definitely surprised that CBS managed to beat him without matching his strength. Obviously, the referee doing a proper job helped, but perhaps if there'd been proper refereeing in some of Akali's previous fights, he may have lost before now. Nevertheless, CBS used those small windows of opportunity where he did have just about enough space to punch very, very well. He got those short hooks off and hurt Lawrence Akali on several occasions. Not an easy feat, so props to him. Unfortunately, Akali does have a rematch clause in the contract. I'd fully understand if he decides to exercise it, but I'm praying the boxing gods have mercy on our souls because we don't want to see that again. It was an absolutely awful fight. In fact, most fans don't want to see a Akali fight again full stop, no matter who it's against. He has put on a couple of entertaining performances in the past, to be fair, but they're few and far between. What we normally get is a Vladimir Klitschko-style clinch fest, minus the accurate punching. Some say he's gotten worse under Sugar Hill, and that he should have stuck with Shane McGuigan? Well, he certainly hasn't mastered that Kronk style yet, that's for sure. Will he ever master it? Time will tell. But it's true that his most impressive and entertaining performance to date was against Krzysztof Klawacki, and that was under the tutelage of Shane McGuigan. As for CBS, hopefully he isn't obligated to rematch Lawrence O'Colley immediately, and he can instead move on to unifications. I'm sure he'll want to attempt revenge over Reactpour at some point, but I don't think he's in any rush, judging by what his trainer Shane McGuigan said after the fight. He said that Reactpour is always looking for shortcuts to the top rather than earning his position. Make of that what you will. People are saying that Eddie Hearn will be laughing at Lawrence O'Colley now and he'll be happy that you let him go. And I'm sure that's the case, but let's not forget he let CBS go as well. CBS was a matchroom fighter who also left to join Ben Shalom, as was Richard Reactpour. Hearn would be in a much better position in that division if those two cruiserweights were still fighting on his shows. Anyway, leave a like, leave a comment, and let me know what you guys think about everything I've talked about in this video.